picture yourself in a courtroom where your fate is hanging by the jagged lines of a machine's graph. A machine claiming that it can measure truth, not by your words, but by your heartbeats, not by your intentions, but by your breaths. It's simple, you're either guilty or you're free. Now imagine yourself in a different scenario. You're at a border crossing in an airport, and as AI scans your micro-expressions, one wrong blink or fleeting glance could determine whether you're welcome or you're flagged to enter a country. Now, is this progress or a dystopian world? Let's go all the way back to the 19th century, where the first ever lie detector was something called a polygraph. The polygraph was originally invented by John Augustus Larson, a police officer and a medical student studying in California. Larson designed the machine so that it would measure three things, your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and your blood pressure. And he believed that fluctuations in these areas indicated signs of trickery. Now, back then, the polygraph was used as an essential tool for investigative processes, such as evaluating suspects or witnesses. During that time, there was no way to prove that this method was accurate. But today, we learn from the MIT Technology Review that these changes don't always correlate with deception. For instance, I'm sure that many of us, like you and me, have the tendency to grow nervous under questioning, even when not actually guilty of anything. Let me tell you a story of Emmanuel Mervilus, a regular who worked at a cooking oil company. Now, one day, while Mervilus was on his way to a donut shop, the police accused him of burglary and asked him to take a polygraph test the very next day. However, that same night, Mervilus learned the tragic news that his mother had just passed away. The next day, he went into the room feeling anxious and distraught, and unfortunately, he failed the polygraph test. The judge then sentenced him to 11 years in prison. On the flip side, practice liars can easily pass these types of polygraph tests by suppressing their emotions of fear. Take Gary Ridgway, for example. He's also known as the Green River Killer, and in 1982, he easily passed a polygraph test denying that he'd killed anyone, even though he had already, in fact, murdered four women. This proves to show that polygraph tests aren't always that reliable. So now that we've reached this point, an important question arises. How will AI lie detectors affect the way that we interact with each other? But first, AI has significantly evolved since then. And so let me introduce you to one of the projects that is used today. Today, the European Union is grappling with migration flows with over 700 million people entering each year. This makes it difficult for border guards to uphold strict security protocols, especially because they need to check the documents of each passenger. Therefore, in 2016, the European Union funded a project called iBorder Control, which aimed to use artificial intelligence at border crossings to facilitate the work of border guards. Now, how this would work was that passengers would first go through pre-registration online, in which they would upload pictures of their passport, visa, etc. Simple. Step two, they would be interviewed by an avatar border guard, in which this border guard would analyze the micro-expressions of the passengers. And at the end of the interview, they would be given a risk score, in which passengers with a high risk score would be under high suspicion, whereas those with a low risk score would mean vice versa. That's the first stage. The second stage takes place at the actual border crossing, where passengers who are given a high risk score would go through deep investigation, whereas those with a low risk score would just go through a short reevaluation. Now, when this project first came out, it was met with a generous amount of criticism especially from the European Parliament and the local community. In fact, many called it dystopian because they claimed that human expressions are varied, especially for those with certain disabilities. And now that we've reached this point, the question arises, 
How can AI lie detectors affect the way that we interact with each other? Let me introduce you to one of the world's most influential psychologists, Paul Ekman. He's also known as the deception detection expert, and through cross-cultural studies, he was able to come up with something called display rules, which are rules that we learn in the course of growing up about when, where, and to who we should express our emotions to. Here's Paul Ekman's model of universal and display rules side by side. Universal rules are the seven main emotions that we all feel, like happiness, sadness, etc. Display rules, on the other hand, are culturally specific, meaning that specific events in different cultures can bring forth different emotions. For instance, a dish could be considered a delicacy in one culture, but could evoke feelings of revulsion in another. To further expand on this, Paul Ekman conducted a study comparing the facial expressions of Japanese and American students. He used a hidden camera to videotape the students' reactions while watching a horror movie in private. When he made them watch it by themselves, he noticed no difference between the facial expressions of these two groups. However, when he made them watch it in the presence of an authority figure, like a teacher, he noticed something strange. He noticed that the Japanese students, not the American students, masked their expressions of fear. This is all due to the operation of display rules, because the Japanese tend to be more reserved by nature, whereas Americans are more open and freely express their emotions. So how does this relate to AI? AI lie detectors are typically used to analyze verbal and nonverbal signals. But if these systems are not trained to recognize cultural variation in expression, they could misinterpret cues or the intentions of an individual. So now, as we, reach, as we stand on the brink of technological evolution, another question arises. How can we harness the power of AI to create a more honest society? Or would AI result in a world where trust is fully replaced by constant surveillance? For instance, Consider the role of AI in university portfolio submissions or job interviews. Can AI be a reliable judge in assessing the authenticity in job interviews? Or might AI unintentionally misjudge candidates based on cultural differences? Essentially, the story of AI is not just about the rise of intelligent detection machines. It's about the transformation of humanity itself. It's about whether we let AI divide us or use it as a force for fairness. And so, as promising as AI lie detectors may sound, we also can't lose sight of the most ancient, most powerful form of technology ever created, and that is the bridge of human connection that holds us all. Thank you.